Hello, uh, this is me, this is Jake. I'll be uh, talking about IndexedDB and Web Standards in a few minutes with my good colleague, Surma. Hello, I'm Surma. Okay. Cool. So we are good to go. We're good to go. Do I need yeah. face powder? Am I shiny? I sometimes get shiny. So, 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 I'm going to try and do something a little bit different this time. I can tell. We have a laptop here. We yeah, don't have a laptop here usually. We've What's got a happening? laptop here. Now, do you remember the YouTube series Supercharged? Ooh, I'm not very familiar with it. Right. Well, I thought I would try and do that, basically. Uh, but so after I, I said, you know, this is the end of Supercharged, you're not like, I'll bring it back. Lol. Bringing it back. All yes. right. Let's do it. Um, Let's do it. There's a little twist. Oh, OK. And instead of. Um, coding something, like uh, you're building something, I'm going to edit a web spec. Oh. Because it's something that I only really learned to do the past few years. Um, it's not something a lot of people do. I only found a feature that I wanted to add. It's relatively small. Okay. So I thought, we'll go for the whole end to end. Let's do it. Because I've never right. done actual spec editing. The only thing I've done is I contributed links to the stream spec so you can click the links and make it more navigational. And I can I can read the odd spec every now and then. Mm -hmm. But I've never actually like went through the normative sections or anything. So that's all right. I'm 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 gonna have questions. I'm okay. gonna throw them at you. That's good. That's good. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna start with trying to describe the, the problem. Um, the problem is index DB. Now there are I a lot of problems yes. with index DB. <laughs> that's a bad start. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna talk about one specific Are we fixing problem. index DB? Is um, it gonna be better? Very, very slightly better <laughs> well, in a very small way. Better than worse. So, okay. um, so when you do index DB, um, let, this is me trying to remember the API. The actual um, API, not your nice promise wrapper on top. Yeah, this is raw index DB. You get a uh, request object. Let's see. And there's a on success. I really love autocomplete in editors. It absolutely I, I, saves me. Yes. Um, so uh, right, we got our own success. This is going to give us a database, um, which is dot results. Yes, I'm remembering the API. Because why would it be a parameter to the on success function, right? Oh, of course not. No, no. Right, index DB <laughs> is a horrible API. It's a fractal of weird design, really. Yes. So the way you work with index DB is you create a transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to go to DB transaction. You say, like, you give it the name. I mean, we're kind um, of assuming that people know what index DB is. It's like it's a, a database for on the client side. And you can have multiple storages, and you can put things into the storages, and you have transactions, as we've shown here. It's a pretty, in a sense, a pretty powerful API. Yes. Once you have wrapped your head around the kind of weird API that got shipped in the end. Yes. And there's a very specific part of it um, that I. Uh, Ran into like a problem that I ran into, and it's with uh, cursors. So, all right. So you uh, open, you create a transaction. The transaction is on a specific store, which can have multiple entries. You can have yes. multiple. You know, like, if you imagine a SQL database with your tables and rows, a table would be a store, and in that store can be multiple entries, as in rows in a SQL database. Yes. And uh, so you have to limit a transaction to a set of Stores, I think. Yep. In so this the case, transaction. it's just one, but it could be multiple. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to go for on success here, and this is what this is how you open a cursor in an index. And a cursor DB. is basically a little data circuit that allows you to traverse all the entries in a store. Yes. So much I do know about IDB. Uh, so I've done that now. Uh, so this is the sort of boilerplate. So quick and easy. This is this is a really easy episode <laughs> to explain. This is basically the start. Um, boilerplate. So I, I've been creating uh, a little wrapper library around IndexedDB. For a while um, now. For like a you... while now. Yeah, it's been, it's been released for a while. I'm working on the next version. The next major version with breaking changes, I guess, yes. and everything. And it's called IDB. It right? is called IDB. On... That was available in NPM. Great. That is surprising. I'll take it. So because I guess we should be clear, IDB is your library. This API is called IndexedDB. Yes, I made it's it very, very It's, it's very common to, to call IndexedDB IDB, but technically, which is why I thought I'll take that namespace and try and make it sound all official. <laughs> um, Great, well done. So what I was trying to do is create an API where um, if you get given a, a normal index DB object, uh, you can pass it into my API and it will enhance it with all of the extra stuff and make it easier mm -hmm. to use. Um, 
And the problem I ran into is with cursors. So once you've got a cursor, um, the cursor will give you the uh, the key and the value of this yeah. one entry. Of um, the row that, it, row that it's currently at in the storage. Yes. And when you want to go to the next row, uh, you do uh, cursor.continue. OK. Um, and now this doesn't return anything. What it does is it causes the, the, the request um, for the cursor to fire its success event again. Right. So this is bas basically a hidden way of calling this function recursive. Yes. OK. Yes. It's a, a super weird way of doing that. Uh, and then uh, if the cursor, um, well, let's just say if the cursor is null, um, that's, that's you done. Then you reach the end of you, your object store. Exactly. OK. So this, I, I faced a problem with this, because um, if someone just passes me the cursor object, I have the means to. When you to say me, you mean you as the author of IDB? As, yes, as the, the library. So okay. someone, or, or if you pass a cursor to another piece of code, if we yeah. keep it generic, um, you could then call continue. But you would, and you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, you've got no way of hearing that that works or that fails, because you would also need to have the request. Yes, you need to be in control of the unsuccess handler. Yes. And I noticed that in IndexedDB, there's, there's often roots back, uh, like up the, the, the chain mm -hmm. of, of this hierarchy, basically. The hierarchy. So from the store, you can get to the transaction. You can get to uh, the database, DB. I think. It's DB. Yes, you can get to the database. Um, but there is no link between the cursor and the request. The request. So I was like, wouldn't it be nice if there was uh, the request? The request. Uh, <laughs> uh, there we go. If there was something. And like then this. I, as a library, could temporarily overwrite on success, do the continue bits, do my work, and then I could be pass done. you a cursor, and you could use that cursor. That's great. That seems like a very reasonable thing to have, Jake. Ship it. Exactly. Well, that's what we're going to try and do. That's what we're doing today. Yes, that's exciting. it is. So. Um, I thought, how do I start this? Yeah, well, how do you start? Because now you want to have this on the web platform, right? I mean, you could probably yes. polyfill it by you know, just attaching random things to the cursor, but that wouldn't be standard. We want to make it a standard. So we yes. have to look into the spec, I guess. Yeah, I would say what my library is doing is it depends on being the thing which opens the cursor, because then it has the, requ the original yeah. request, and then it can, it can maintain that link itself. But if you just pass a, a cursor, yeah. You, yeah, you're screwed. So if I was going to do some work on a spec, what I would do is go to MDN. So interesting. I I've got muscle memory for when I search to put MDN or NPM at the start of <laughs> everything. I get the two mixed up all the time. But in this case, I do want indexed DB. Yes. Let's have a it look. It's called indexed DB, not indexed DB. I call it indexed DB all the time. So do I. But I'm yep. just saying, technically, you're wrong. I, I, I'm technically <laughs> wrong about many, many things. And I'm sure many of them are going to come to light in this episode. Um, so yeah, I think indexed DB at MDN has always a very good browser port table and links to the specs, which I value a lot. Yes. And if you want to find which spec something is defined in, MDN is the, the best way, I think, to, to get into that. But see, we already have two specs. We have IndexedDB API and IndexedDB API version 2.0. Yes. It's useful, isn't it? Um, so I'm guessing a cursor is so basic that I would expect it to be in the version 1. Whether that's true is a different question, but that would be my gut feeling. If you've got two choices. Uh, between two specs, let's let's open them both. Um, we'll have a look at the URLs here. Um, so this is the URL for one of them. Um, All right, but even that one says 2.0 here. Yes, that's because 2.0 has now shipped. We're now on to 3.0. But the links in M. We should yes, the links we, in MDN. Someone should update MDN. <laughs> um, if the link to a spec has TR, uh, there's a good chance you're looking at the out of date one. Yes, so those are the snapshots, which I, that I've learned yeah. in Houdini. Those are the snapshots. Like, this is a version. We have now officially, this is the snapshot that has this version. Yes. And I've been told what you should do. You look at this spec, and you find the editor's draft. And that's what you look at. And there will be a link from Usually, there will be a link. Usually. The, sort of the joke is, you know, TR stands for trash. Oh, harsh. I, and that's not always <laughs> true, because sometimes that is literally the latest version of a spec. But if to there is a draft, it's then only you been say. recently, I feel like, that everything turned into more like a rolling release approach rather than working from version major version to major version. Yes. 
All right, so if we have the red bar on the left side, it means we are on an address draft, and this will most likely be the most recent spec. Yes, exactly. But doesn't that mean that there could be stuff in there that isn't even in browsers? That is true, okay. yes. Um, but for this use case, um, we want the latest version because the thing we are wanting to create might already be created. True. Oh, so, so we're looking at the latest version to see if it's already created. If not, then our stuff should be something that is added yeah. to the latest version. So that's why we're working on this one. Yes. Fair. Um, so if, if I was looking for something that I want to be exposed to JavaScript, I'm looking in the spec for the API section. Um, right. Here it is here. Yes, because what is the so what is the, there is a section called API, which gives you the typical web IDL thing. So you have like an almost TypeScript-like definition of the different things. Yeah, it, it's so so here it is. This is the one for cursor. This predates TypeScript by many, many years. Sure. Um, I'm just saying it has types. That's why I, why I mentioned types. Yes, exactly. It, it's. I mean, it, it would be interesting to see if if we started writing specs now from scratch, would we use TypeScript? Is that enough? Maybe. Um, th there's some extra little bits of annotation yeah. around here, but it is doing the same job. It's defining the types of all of these things. But if that is the section, what is the section above? Because I was looking at the sidebar and saw, oh, 2.10. That's cursor. That's where we go, right? Why didn't right. you go there? So specs are tend to be split into two sections. One is the, the constructs or the concepts. Different specs call it different things. Right. And this is just describing how the feature works irregardless of JavaScript. So not right. into JavaScript. So, so it says, like, we look at a database. A database has a name. A database has a version. This is just the talking about the structure. Right. It doesn't mean those things so are exposed to JavaScript. this doesn't help you write code. This potentially helps you, or probably helps implementers understand the nuances and details. Yeah, yeah. This is this is describing how the system works. And then we would see down in IDB database. This is describing the JavaScript interface. We will see it oh, look, does have a, version. a name and a version. All right. But this needs to be explicitly set up. So when you click on name there, it says the name attribute getter must return the name of the connected database. We click that. It will then link up to the concept. So this is where we connect the the IDL stuff to the definitions and the constructs yeah. area. All yeah. Right. So gotcha. this so this stuff at the top here this lives in C plus plus land. It can live on another thread. All of that sort of so, stuff. That's so fine. that's probably more relevant to implementers, not really relevant to me as a web developer. Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Okay. If, if you're looking to see what a thing is capable of, or uh, you know what the API is, straight into the API section. Cool. Uh, and we can see like cursor here. I feel much more at home with this view already because it, like, it looks like a little bit like JavaScript, and I can I, I get this. Yes. So we can see here there's this function called advance. Oh, um, we have advance and continue now. Ad advance and continue. And what's um, the difference? So advance takes a number. So I'm saying ah. skip five items. So it's like calling continue five times. Uh, you can't call continue five times. You can only call one of these advancing functions once. Can you tell that <laughs> I've been working with IndexedDB <laughs> recently? I've had to get the spec in my head. Um, Oh, it's so yeah. It would well, be I guess I, I would have call called, called continue, then unsuccessfully called. I call continue again. Do that five times. Yes, and then that it would be equivalent. That would be fine. Uh, but it tends. It's, to, it's also annoying. <laughs> yes, it sees it as a bug if if you try and tell it to do two. Because if you said advance five and advance two, it sees that as like more. You know, yeah. which, which do you mean okay. rather than adding the two together? Um, okay. But so what we do see on the cursor that there is no request. Right. Which is. What we were expected to find, where well, we knew it wasn't implemented. Um, so, what do we do? Do uh, we just just add read-only attribute request and show um, it? Not yet. Oh, okay. Because um, the next thing is to to propose the feature. Ah, oh, so, I mean, yeah, you can't just decide this on your own. I mean, you could. You're not going to get anywhere with it though. That's true. <laughs> so you're going to be very disappointed. So uh, at the top of the spec, it, there's a, a link here for issue tracking, GitHub. It's mostly GitHub nowadays. It is mostly GitHub nowadays. So uh, I'm going to go into here and um, the, so some oh, of this. Oh, look at this. There's a cursor that request <laughs> issue opened by Jake Archibald. Yes, there is. This, so this is I've set this up in advance a bit. Um, in fact, when I started doing this, I, I wasn't thinking about making it an episode. Um, but what I did was I, I went in uh, and said, mm, this is a bit weird. Why isn't the uh, cursor dot request? It's essentially what I said. We'll link to this in the description because some people might want to look at how you phrase and how the discussion went. Yes, exactly. So this is what I this is what I wrote, just basically requesting the feature. Yeah. So, you know, when you and pass do note, it's around. not like a long form formal tone proposal. Just like I have this idea. What what do people think? It's, it's still yes. a very human approach, even though it is we are working in spec world right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm describing the problem. 
not the. Uh, I do suggest a solution, but I describe the problem first. Yeah, uh, and that's a common I, a problem I see in in some uh, feature discussion. Someone comes and goes. I want this, and the next question is why. Or why? So yeah. I start with the why, and here's my proposal because that would, in case the person who knows more than me about this stuff can come and say, yeah. um, here's a better no. way to solve your problem, <laughs> or here's a better solution to the problem. Yeah. They don't have to wait for the, the you know back yeah. and forth. Um, and it turns out, um, this is Josh Bell, who uh, does the implementation in Chrome, also does the spec work. So um, he's a Googler. That's it. He's a Googler, and he's saying, yeah, that sounds all right. I'm like, oh, this doesn't usually happen. <laughs> um, and, and sort of agrees with the, the use case. Uh, he asks other spec folks to yeah. chime in. Uh, and then we've got uh, Ali from Microsoft, Andrew from Mozilla, uh, and Brady from Apple saying, Brilliant. it's fine. This has never happened before. That, like, that never is, this quickly. That is very, very frictionless. Yes, and I think it's because it's such a small feature, um, and it fits in with IndexedDB so well. And the implementers are like, they have a feeling it's really easy for them to implement. Yeah, I mean, so. it, it feels like the thing that under the hood should be very easy to do. I'm yes. speaking as someone who has yeah. never shipped anything in a browser myself. Well, but um, literally just exposing something that already exists and is probably internally already tied to the request anyway. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, and so that's what I thought. It's like, it, I thought, well, why not? Because it feels like a small change. Let's do it now. Let's so do that's it. the intro to this episode. <laughs> Cue the <laughs> intro. <laughs> Are we going to put a remix of the title sequence of Supercharged on? Oh, there? oh yes. Could... Can we do that? Can we put Comic Summer? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do this. We're going to do this. So um, where do we start? Is it? So th there's two things you need to land uh, for a spec change. Uh, spec change mm -hmm. and tests. Tests. Very the tests important. are very important. Um, and I am going to do the tests first. Oh, you're going test-driven development. And I don't always do this. But all the times I've done it, it's been incredibly successful. So I don't know all why right. I don't do it more often. So we um, have this thing called Web Platform Tests, which you can get into by wpt.fyi. Well, I would say uh, you can get into it from the spec as well. Oh, so right at the top here, a link to the test suite. It links to Web Platform Tests, which is the repository that has yes. literally the entire Web Platform Tests. Yes. Every API is supposed to have a test suite in here. Yes, absolutely. So this, this is all the index DB ones. That's a lot um, of tests. There is a lot of tests. Oh um, wow! Uh, from many years ago, some of them two years ago to five days ago. That's that's cool. five years ago. Five years ago, excellent. Uh, is any any advance on five years ago? I'm not going to do that. I, I'm <laughs> doubtful. Um, so there is a lot of files. Yes, and so writing tests is a really good way to contribute to the web platform because the tests are in JavaScript. Yes. So you don't you, you don't need to understand the specification stuff in order to contribute. Uh, you just write a test to describe how the feature you want and I've works. done I have contributed some tests myself mm -hmm. and um, while it is a bit odd because it's obviously a, a kind of organically grown system over time yeah. you, you just look at some other tests and you will get the hang of it quite quickly on how it works and that is exactly what we're going to do uh, so the repo yeah it covers all of the <laughs> oh, it's a lot of scrolling. Uh, all of the stuff you need to set up something yeah. like this. Because it is really well documented. I, I, yeah. I had no problem setting it up the first time I wanted to. It just worked pretty much straight away. So well, well done yeah. then. So you would one. check it out, fork it, and then follow these instructions. Because there are some things you need to add to your host file, yeah. uh, that sort of stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is, so I, I don't need to fork web platform tests, because I actually have commit rights to that. Oh. I know, check me out. So um, let's go to, and this is me trying to remember. Ah, oh, there we go. Brilliant. Uh, web platform tests. Um, and this is what we're going to start editing. So uh, we're going to go to WPT serve, which is this is all documented. Yeah, this uh, starts we go. the test server. Look at all that. It makes total sense. Uh, it <laughs> starts the test server on many ports. Uh, this is the one I'm going to use. This is the normal unencrypted one. Yeah, we have um, multiple ports and multiple post names in this repository because sometimes you need to do tests for cross origin cross origin things, things cross scheme things like yeah. HTTP to HTTPS, that sort of stuff. So the server um, has to provide all of that. That's why that might have looked a bit overwhelming. Yes, uh, so I'm going to pick up one of these. Um, all right, so so you now in the IndexedDB test folder. Yep. If you open any of these HTML files, as far as I know, the tests will run and you will see the results. Cool. There we go. Look at that. 
How did you decide which file you are? Is this just like to show the results, yeah, or so, so yeah, the file so you're going to edit? No, so this is the um, well, you know, it's a little bit different specs write the test differently. Yeah, um, I've picked a file called IDB cursor dash source. Um, I would assume. I say I'm assuming. I know because I've looked <laughs> at it in advance. Uh, these are the tests for um, cursor dot source. So um, the from from the cursor objects, you can go to the source, which gives you back the um, the store or the index. Oh, so, we, so you yeah. get from the cursor, you can go to the store, but not the request. So the request is literally like yeah. the, the missing link. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. So, okay. so we've got that. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to edit So this. how afraid should I be of picking the wrong file? If I want to contribute something, I'm not sure which HTML file I should add my test to. I, I mean. Not that afraid, right? The, in the review, people are going to be like, "Good test, just move into this here. file, please." And then that's going to be a very. The small people are usually, in my experience, are really friendly. Yeah, they, they are actually, and super grateful for like, having people uh, work on this stuff, yeah. right? Because it's it's dead handy. Uh, so let's go for uh, web platform tests. I'm All right, to break out the VS Code. Here we go. All right. So yeah, we want to write tests for the feature now. I. One of the benefits of doing test first is implementers who are super keen can mm -hmm. start implementing based on your tests while True. you're working on the spec. This actually happened with the abortable fetch stuff. Interesting. So this is why it's a, a really good uh, place to start. So that means I'm, it's not even frowned upon to open a PR for my new tests, even if the spec change hasn't landed yet. Correct. And you can have those reviews going uh, in parallel. Yeah. Um, so here it is. This is the, the Source for the test we were just looking at. Okay. Um, so let, let's let's dissect this a little yeah. bit. So we have the test harness, test harness report, which is test harness. We can ignore that for now. That's, that's the, the framework for the it's test. Literally like the harness for the tests. The equivalent of Mocha and Chai, that sort of thing. Cool. Support is probably literally that support functions, I guess. Yes, It'll specifically for the index DB stuff. Right, because it's in yep. this folder. It's not a global support file. It's yep. in the index. And DB that's how stuff. I knew that just by the the, the path there. That okay. It's local. Um, and the rest is test functions, it seems like. It is like. test functions. Um, OK. So yeah, there's, there's a, a cursor source test. Um, and it seems like th th this is generated tests, because they're, they're calling this function twice. It's passing in a function to, I would say this is very complicated written test. <laughs> it's okay. difficult to follow. Um, but one of the important things for me here is uh, seeing this. Uh, index DB test. So it's a um, special index DB test function. Yeah, and I know this is not part of the, of the framework of the uh, web platform test framework. So uh, one of the things you can get from uh, right at the bottom of the readme for web platform tests is how to write and review tests. Well, that seems helpful. Um, I don't know why that links right at the bottom, but it is. So we go to writing tests. Um, it's uh, it test harness is that that's um, one of the includes that we had in yeah. there. And it will give you the uh, documentation for test okay. harness. And this is going to tell you, you know, how to call tests. Like you do that, you right. pass in so a function. I've seen these before. Um, you have like, a test function. So I was surprised to see that I index to be has apparently their own version of this yes. test function. Yes. Yes. So uh, we can see here there's async tests, there's ways of like doing all of this sort of stuff. Um, and then towards the bottom, you get all of the lists of uh, different asserts. Here they are. So a certain array is right. not equal. So this equals. would be the yep. the mocha chai thing. Where yeah. So this is chai. Sorry. The rest of it was mocha. mocha yeah. <laughs> if, if that's if that's mocha? how you look at mocha. Who knows? Mocha mocha. I don't know. Um, so index DB test is not in there. This is something special. So that would probably be in the support chest. Then I would probably. Assume. And how much easier has ECMAScript modules made our lives? That right. it would be so easy to find where that was coming from. Especially but with TypeScript and then, then VS Code, we just press F12. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just going to do uh, index sup, and it's going to give me that uh, yeah. file, and we can have a look at it. Um, and it was an index DB test. There, oh, there we go. All right. So here it is. So it uses async test under the hood, as we can see straight away. Exactly. Do we care exactly. about the details? Um, you provide an upgrade function, an open function, descriptions, and options. All right? Yes. So uh, upgrade function, this is something IndexedDB has as a way right. of setting up the schema for a database. Um, open function is 
Well, be, once it's open, once it's the success upgraded. handler, basically, more or less, I guess. Exactly, exactly. And then just the name of the. So text. I'm guessing they wrapped it so it makes sure it cleans up after you, re deletes all the stray. Yep. Collect object stores that might have been created. Deletes in advance, tests cool. that, d make sure it froze if it can't delete the database, if it can't open the database. Because it turns out yeah. IndexDB is persistent to disk. So if we didn't clean up after ourselves, we might you know, blow <laughs> up the disk's usage. Yes, and it gets really messy, if you're, especially if you get the tests overlapping each other. Yeah. yeah. So this, this handles all of that, which is nice. Um, so let's go back to cursor source. Brilliant. Uh, so we can see here that, yes, there's, there's going to be uh, a couple of callbacks. So the first one there, this is where it's setting up the database. That's the upgrade function. This is, I think, if I remember correctly, the upgrade function, which is called as I said at the start, is the only function where you can create object stores. Yes, create object stores, create indexes. Um, you can add stuff to the store, but you can do that elsewhere as well. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it's the only place where you can actually modify the structure of the database. OK. And then the next stuff's coming in. Like This is where we actually write the test, I assume. Yeah. And we can see here it's being passed the uh, t, which is, well, I, I know it's the test object, because uh, that will appear here, t.step function. Uh, this is how. So the, the web platform tests have promise tests, yeah. which are so much easier to deal with. Because yes. you, you write an async function, and it's just sequential. Index DB, a doesn't bit more. Have promises. Doesn't have promises. Hence your library. Hence the library. <laughs> so we're dealing with this step function, which is you declaring, I'm giving you a callback that must be called. OK. Like, this is definitely. Um, that meaning if a callback doesn't get called, the test will fail? Well, actually, maybe not, because this uh, a certain reach is not going to happen. Do you know what? I'm not sure. For every callback, you have to wrap it in step function. OK. Ah, this is why I normally do promise tests. Uh, so we're going to cargo cult this a little bit okay. and write the test for the feature we want. So um, can, I just, can I duplicate in, in this? Is you can if you copy paste. Oh, copy paste, of course. Brilliant. There we go. Um, so I'm going to call this. So you created um, a new file. Yeah. Will that automatically run? Just yes. By existing. Yes. Uh, in the when browsers run all of these tests at once, it just crawls through the this system. Cool. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have IDB cursor request. Um, I'll probably change this bit. Uh, uh, at chromium.org. If I spelled that right. Yes, I, I have. That's about right. Excellent. And get rid of that. You don't have any cool letters in your name. I know. I know. It makes it easier to type on a British keyboard, though. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to write these these tests then. Let's uh, delete gonna, the old ones. Delete the old ones. Yeah, I guess we don't really need anything else. I, I would kind of wasted everyone's time copying and pasting that because we're going to start with uh, pretty much this. Uh, so actually, what I will do is we'll, we'll keep this around so we can. Uh, double For check reference. how to do stuff. Yes, because yeah. it, it's uh, it's not something I've done a lot of. This is index DB test. Yes, and then we've got our three functions coming up. So this first one is going to be setting up a database. So let's do that. Uh, it takes a test object and a DB. I think mm -hmm. is that what it did? Yeah. All right. Do you know what? This looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to take that. <laughs> I mean, why I'm, not? We don't even need an index, do we? Uh, we don't need an index, so we do need data. We do need data. Um, I will take a data, an entire data, and just <laughs> to prove that I didn't steal it. Modern JavaScript. It's, so that's it's actually, mine now. It's actually a, I wanted about to ask because you used an error function. You used const. Um, yes. What JavaScript is usually um, acceptable? It comes down to um, because there was a time where. Let and const or error functions were in some browsers, but not others. Absolutely. And so the idea is to make, you want these tests to run easily in the browsers you want them implemented in. OK. So um, I wrote some service worker tests, yeah. and I used broadcast channel mm -hmm. to do communication. And it was kind of like, if you want Safari to get this right, you need to stop using broadcast channel. I was just using it as a way to pass messages yeah. around. It wasn't Pretty integral to the test, but it was making it fail right. in Safari. So here, like, this is only going to be adopted by new browsers. We're talking about a new feature. So it's not going to, some, not something that we're targeting at IE 11, for example. Exactly. Right? So we, we, exactly. Are, we can look at the most recent versions of all the standard browsers. And if they have a certain feature, it's cool to use it in the test. Is yes. that basically fair to say? I, it's absolutely fair to say. Um, so what am I going to do now? So where does this come from? 
Oh, OK. So this is they're, they're passing this function in as a way of creating a, a cursor. A um, so I don't know. I'll steal that code as well, I reckon. So let's uh, do that and format that all nicely. So we've got a database, creating a transaction, mm -hmm. creating an object store. We're not using an index. Uh, and that's going to be a request for our cursor. For our cursor. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, so our request dot uh, on success. And this is where we need to bring in that the step function. The step function. So uh, and because I have zero memory, I'm always going to look it up. Step function. Really annoys me that it's underscore based. I, I saw a lot, of, a, a lot of um, is it called snake case? Yes. A very. Yeah. It is, in a way, JavaScript under Neomatic, I think. I think in terms yeah. of JavaScript, it has mostly settled on camel case. Camel case. And this is, I, I think, a lot of this framework is Python um, oh, right. based. So it's. I, I think it maybe has inherited from that. Fair. Um, it's still readable, so it's not too big a deal, I think. Yep. But and I think I could just pass a function into there. Right, that's fine. Uh, and so we're kind of at a point now. I've got my cursor. I'll. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we needed to add data into mm -hmm. this store. Because if I didn't do that, we wouldn't get a cursor. We wouldn't get a cursor, because there's nothing in there. Right. Exactly. So I'm going to uh, request dot result. So currently, you don't have a description of what this test is testing. Oh, that's a good point. Where I would that go? It is the third uh, argument to here. Right. So I will write. Well, let, let's, let's take some inspiration from how the, how the other ones are written. Um, they are not. They're brilliant. Excellent. Uh, there's a test name here. So where is it getting that from? Oh, it's the first argument. Oh, I see. So they're taking document. Wow. That's, are you going oh, to steal that? Yeah. Why not? Because uh, I should. It's, it's pointed out that there's a bit I've forgotten here. So um, <laughs> wow. this is so hacky. Um, so document a title. No, that's, that's, that's it. That's our test. That's our test. Brilliant. Cool. Sorted. Uh, so now I need to write some tests for this feature. Uh, I'm hoping someone says in the review that this is not a good title for the test, because it's just <laughs> ID because of, Actually, it is a good title. No, no, it's because it, it's, it's, it's got dot request. Yeah, that's, um, it's actually a decent title. All although right. it really, because to me, and this is a oh, totally off topic bugbear, when people write this, to me, this looks like a static property of the class. Ah, oh, that debate. Yeah. Um, it's so not I, because dot request is not on the IDB cursor constructor. See, it's on an yeah. instance of the IDB cursor. Yeah. I've seen some people do this, or you know, you could do Oh no. No. I mean that's uh, well, whatever, fine. Technically correct. Technically correct, I think you'll find. Uh, so I've got the cursor, uh, and now I want to write some asserts. Uh, I think the uh, I'm gonna do assert equals. There we go. And uh, so it's the actual value, the expected value, and a description. All right. That seems doable. Because what I want is uh, equal. Uh, um, I guess, uh, is there a strict equal? I would usually go for a strict equal. I would have looked at it like, I'm guessing you want to just check for existence, right? Or for not null. Yeah, I th well, I think it might be strict by default. Let's I would hope so. Um, because if you assert. It's not in Chai, this is the thing. So I've been writing Chai this morning, so. Uh, Strictly true. It's strictly and but down here it relies on triple equals. Oh, it relies on triple equals. Well done. So it uses strictly there and then uses. Look at the documentation. Equals. Brilliant, excellent. It is, it is actually really good docs. Um, <laughs> so assert equals. I want a curse custo, custard uh, cursor. See, I can't spell cursor dot uh, request, and I want that to equal the rec. The rec. Um, cursor has request. <laughs> Uh, I can't type when How I'm How do you get watched. stuff done? Uh, well, I don't. That's the, <laughs> that's what happens. So we, we've actually tested quite a lot in this one line, because mm -hmm. uh, we've not only tested that cursor.request exists, uh, we've kind of tested its type. Um, and the correct value. And the correct value. And this is, this and is, this is all you're asking for. You just want the dot .request to exist and be the value of the original request. Yes. and it, and it But this test also tells implementers that it's not a new request object. Yeah, that represents the same underlying request. It okay. is literally the, it has same to be the same JavaScript object. It's going to be equals equals equals. So that's actually interesting. Is that something that you care about as a developer? 
if all you, if you just want to have access to the request with all the data it provides, yeah. do you actually care about it being the exact same instance? I, I think you do because okay, there's not a, a lot of time you'll be doing equals 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 or, or, or something, but you might yeah. be using weak maps. Good point. And so you want the the same the representation, the same thing to be exactly the same. Yes, object. you want the quality to hold. All right. Yep. That, that makes sense. And what I will also do is as a uh, I'm going to steal from. Let's see what else have they got here. So they're testing instances. We don't need to do that. That's already taken care of. Um, the stringified object that's already taken care of because if if it's we equal already request, have request, yeah, that's somewhere else. Uh, but this we're going to steal because I want to make sure that, like the other things, that uh, cursor dot request is going to be read only. Ah. Huh. All right, so this is actually a different. So you don't per pass in custom request, but the name of the property, because I'm guessing it gets the property descriptor and checks yeah. for the read only file. Yes, and I guess it will try and set to it maybe as well. I'm not actually sure what the implementation is, but that, that essentially tests the two things that will make it similar to the other yeah. bits, but, but the, the thing that we want. And I, I think that's it. So now we can run the test and see it fail. And now we can run the test and see it fail. So I should just be able to request. Uh, and it failed. It fails. And the third equal is not defined. That's not the error I was expecting. Uh, no, it is not the, uh, the one I was expecting. So is it assert, assert equals or? I would, yes. Yeah, look at that. Brilliant. The one time you don't copy paste. I know. I'm such a <laughs> copy paster. I... So it should still fail. Expected but... object, but got undefined. Hurrah, we have uncovered that this test is failing. All right, so. Yep. And this is actually. If you wanted to stop here, uh, and you have helped massively with web standards, like the feature you want that you've been told, yeah, great, writing the test for it is a yeah. solid, solid effort, right? It's more than most people do. And you haven't so had to. So, that's actually a really good point in the sense like if you're not comfortable engaging necessarily with spec language mm -hmm. and all the, the patterns and stuff that comes with that, this is a very, a very, uh, Web developer approachable way to how can you and drive features for that you personally might want. Exactly, and uh, I would always it's difficult. It's really difficult writing tests for things that don't exist because yeah. you don't really know how. Like, does your test actually work? I mean, we spotted something there. Yeah. Um, but maybe you would do something like I don't know. Um, what if we did uh, cursor dot uh, requests equals <laughs> like we'll just do that, um, and. Oh, right. So it's got onto the next test, but it's showing us that it's not read only. So we right. at least know that it, it passed that first test. So we can so kind of prove. So that's why the read only test is actually important. It's actually important. So we know we've got somewhere. We know we've got a solid test. Yeah. All right. So yeah. now what do we do now? You would commit this, PR it, and then we'll move on to the spec? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I will do them in tandem, and we'll do the PRs at the end. But yes, if right. you wanted to stop here, you could do that. You could have people check As it over. As you said, this was already help browser developers to implement this feature. Exactly. All exactly. Right. But we're gonna we're gonna do the spec. Oh boy. We're gonna do the spec oh boy. Work. So we need to have, have a think about what we actually need to change. Um, we've already talked about the structure of the spec. It's in sort of two parts. Yeah. Um, so we would need to create a link between the cursor and the request. Yeah. And then find a way of exposing that. Well, I guess we should check first if under the hood the cursor isn't already has has a link defined to the request, right? Exactly, and and in the same way that if you call cursor dot continue, yeah. um, it works somehow. So right, there's and, a that, good and that uses the request, right? Yes, so it must have some kind of connection to the request under the hood, uh, and we will you see here. A cursor has a request. Yes, which is the request used to open the cursor. Great definition. It's there. It was just never exposed Interesting. to JavaScript. So, so I guess what you just did, you just skim read the bold things, I guess, right? Like, it's like, is there something that is the kind of eye you develop if the more time you spend in specs, where you're able to look at this flood of words and don't actually have to read every paragraph. Well, the, the way I actually discovered that um, is I I went into Object Store, I went into Open Cursor, um, right. I started sort of reading. Like, how, how does open cursor actually work? Because this is where you get the request. So that, that's, this um, is the fifth section called algorithms, I guess? Yes, which is just sort of where the two things are mashed together. So, But it's so. not quite code. It's, it's prose in a step-by-step -step 
fashion. Yes. But that is yep. basically what the implementers then turn into C++ code most of the time. Yeah, not Rust that is in Servo, that sort true. of thing. So yep. what's actually running under the hood? And it was just where I saw step eight, which was set cursor's request to request. Well, like, that's oh, ironic. <laughs> there, there it is. And linking back to it, a cursor has a request. It's like, right, that's. It's there. Yes. So that means, yep. that tells us that implementers already have this in their code. A cursor has a request. Yes. So that would tell me, from what you've told me so far, that the only thing that's actually needed is to put something into the API bit. To link those things together. Yeah. Um, pretty much. So, um, well, let, let's, let's, let's dive into it. So at this point, you would go to uh, GitHub, clone the spec. Clone then the spec. you've got a copy of it. Uh, what does I a have... spec look like in code, Jake? Well, well, uh, let's have a look. Is it IndexedDB? It uh, is. Oh, look, I did some work with Intersection Observer at some point. I can't remember that, but fair enough. <laughs> um, let's, let's sort out the way iTerm likes to resize things. Is that? Oh, there we go. That's fine. So uh, if we have a look at what's here. That's a lot. There's a lot of stuff. Um, the actual spec So there is, is an HTML file, but that's not it. That's generated. That's the compiled output, isn't it? Because the, the source output. is a language called Bike Shed. Bike Shed. So and that, this is this file here, index.bs. <laughs> it's very funny. Uh, it's Bike Shed. And it's, it's a special format kind of based on Markdown. Uh, it has Markdown properties. Show it to me. Show, let's, show, let's show, show me. Let's dive thing. in. Let's dive in. So here we go. More window resizing. More window resizing. Uh, oh, look, excellent. the tab's already open. The tab's already open. It's almost as if I've been looking at it already. Uh, so, so this is it. So if we. Um, Wait, scroll, let's go to the Let's start go, at the top. Oh, we, we don't have time to go through the whole thing, mate. No, but what do you <laughs> right. get greeted with when you open this file? When right? you open this file. Oh, look, it's, it's HTML. Yeah, you can put HTML in it. It, like, it, it is like Markdown in that respect. Okay. So you can see the list of editors. Uh, some this is just a metadata section. So that is this one one? Is this what will be translated into the section we saw at the start of the spec, where the link yes. to the GitHub is? So this is actually something that will also be parsed. It's not just a generic pre section. Yep. It is actually being parsed and turned into the links that you see at the start of the exactly spec. exactly. So um, there's more metadata, uh, some styles because it is just HTML. They've got some custom styles here for whatever reason. Uh, and then we're starting to get into Markdown, so Markdown heading. I like this little comment thing they've done there. You don't need to do that, but it looks nice. Um, also, oh, soft wrapping. I dislike it. I do, too. I, 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 I can turn wrapping on this. Why do I have to editor. do? Yeah. And also, what, what column is this wrapped at? It seems it, it, it is entirely <laughs> arbitrary. Like, why is that gone? And this one runs over. I suppose that's code, but and you can see, like, this, you know. Uh, that looks familiar. Familiar markdown if you used GitHub before. See, this is wait. Anyway, that's a different topic. If you're editing a spec, the best thing to do is to just sort of figure out what styles they use. Go and with the just flow. Don't them. don't stand out. You know, make yeah. it a consistent <laughs> as much as you can. Don't yeah. go about fixing other stuff because it will make your diff or your PR much harder to look through. Yes. The thing that you add, make it seem like it's part of the spec. Yep. Right, and then and. And some specs use more HTML. Some use more of these bike shed yes. shortcuts. There's quite a few shortcuts going on here, which I prefer uh, than writing out HTML by hand. I should say that the if you want to uh, dive into to ask, bike like, shed, if, if you wanted to know what kind of shortcuts there are for bike shed, yes. So if you wanted to get bike shed, or to use bike shed from our colleague Tab Atkins. From Tab Atkins. It's not the only spec compiling thing available. There's respec as well. I don't really know a lot about respec, so I've. I, I've not done a lot of work on those standards before. Um, but there is uh, documentation. The documentation has also been generated with Bike Shed. Very ah, good. Very good. Very recursive. Um, and so it looks like a living standard. And it, it details all of these shortcuts, how to And to install it these. as well, which you might be interested in. Yes, I would say that um, there's also a web service for you know you just give it a Bike Shed file, it gives you HTML back, handy. which is very, very handy. Very, very handy. Um, so let's uh, let's sort of di dive into how we were going to tackle this. Uh, All right, where do you want to go first? Are we going to the API section? I would go to the API section. Let's go to the API section. So how I, do you go there? Because it's a big document. It's a big document. And do you know what I do? I look for some text near the <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's super right. I mean, yeah, IDL should be fairly precise to find, right? Um, 
it sh yes. I mean, or so, the word interface, which I think. So that, let's maybe let's maybe look for this. Uh, interface is going to be everywhere. I mean, the um, entire thing. Oh, the entire thing, but uh, whether that would be in tags or not. All right, um, it just looks good. So this is okay. We've only got a few of these. Uh, uh, th there it is. IDB cursor interface IDB cursor. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to be, uh, and we want to add a new thing here. Um, let's like read one. only attribute now. The way uh, WebIDL, what it calls an attribute, and this really confused me for a long time. I thought it meant HTML attribute, because that's where I was seeing it in specs. What it means is get a setter, which is okay. silly. If you want to like look at WebIDL, there is, of course, there's a spec. So when you say get a setter, couldn't we just remove the read only and only define the getter? Um, you could. Now, the reason WebIDL tends to be quite detailed is browsers actually use it for code generation. Right. So there tends to be quite a lot of information embedded in uh, in this stuff. So browsers will actually parse this. It will parse this bit and know to where to expose that, that stuff. Um, and it will yeah, essentially then generate then a lot of code. And the developer just has to sort of fill in the, the and then it's developed by the browser developer. The browser developer, ex yeah. exactly. Um, so what do we want to do here? Well, so the first bit is the, the return type. Which is going to be IDB uh, request, which you looked up sometime beforehand. That there is also the interface IDB request. Yes, yes. From using IDB, I know it's that, uh, and that's called request because that makes sense. And there we go. Let's see if it compiles. Oh, are we done? We're not done. <laughs> oh boy. Um, so I, because I've installed Bike Shed. Yeah. I can do Bike Shed. Uh, watch. Let's do that. And off it goes. It has a think about some stuff. Um, done. Great. Excellent. And now I guess the HTML file has been updated. Yeah, and Bike Shed will, uh, it checks a lot of stuff. So we have actually got a warning here. It says there's a definition that's not, that's not referenced locally. Um, if I remove that edit we made, that error is still going to come up. So I would always say, like, run, run first before editing. Yeah. And if there's errors, they're the ones you can ignore because they're not your fault. So That's good because I can't tell what this um, is by. Well, uh, so what it means, what's actually happening here is this oh, equivalent. Equivalent. So this is this is just a web server that I started up. Um, because Bikeshed doesn't do that for you. Bike Maybe it can, but you didn't do that just now. It, yeah, it can't do it. So this is because it's just an HTML file that works anywhere. I always run. I've you can, always you got can a web even server. just open. You can just open the file. You don't even need a web server. You probably could, but I always I always run a web server <laughs> on my dev folder. Oh, I'm a real and, developer. Yeah, well, <laughs> I put it set up to happen at startup because I always need one at some point, and it's normally in that folder. Um, so what, what were we looking up? Um, it was this this equivalent. weird equivalent thing. So. Uh, so we can see this uh, in bold definition here. Um, oh. As long as the end result is equivalent, but nothing's actually referencing it, and it's not exported. Oh, so, okay. So it's flagging it up and going, "You've got this thing here that you're not using. Why?" Which is kind of cool. All it's, right, that's, that's um, helpful. But you know what? Not our problem. Not our problem. We not didn't problem. write it. Um, let's have a look at the cursor API stuff. Dun, dun, dun. And, oh my god, look but, at that. But it's bold and not clickable, Jake. Yeah, it's not clickable because the this other is ones the, look different. It's the only reference to this thing, because we've not referenced it elsewhere. Okay. Um, we've been looking at source as being something similar to what we've Pretty got. much, yeah. So where does it link? Uh, and so this is just um, this just happens below this block. It's okay. saying here the source attributes getter, so once again pros, must return the source of this cursor. Um, and these are all linked up, and we can, you know, you can sort of see what it is. Yeah, says, uh, which is the index of the object store. Which is back. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, What's the other thing? It will never return null or throw. Um, dun, 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 dun. All right. Cool. So I, yeah, it's interesting. So everyone, every spec author has their own sort of style and quirks. Yeah. Uh, I would say like this attribute never returns null is uh, is something I would put in a note because it's. Like the fact that it never returns null is defined elsewhere. Yeah. It, okay. that, that's kind of just like a, a code comment, which I would put in a note because it's not essential information. It's Neither helpful. of these approaches are wrong, though. You can do no, it this no, way, no. you can do it your way. Both seem to be working sure. fine because this is in a spec. So it's. Uh, one thing that is so it's not how I would write a spec, um, but I see a lot in spec land. It's actually something I used to do and I was told off for it. Um, 
it says it, this returns the source of the cursor, uh, but the source points to this thing up in the constructs land. OK. Um, and the spec doesn't describe how to turn that into a JavaScript object. Right. So you Which would... should be explicit, really. Um, and this is when, uh, when I started doing this, uh, mm. Boris Sabarsky, who's like one of the huge minds at Mozilla, yeah. So it says, it's like, well, how do I convert to this? It's like, well, isn't it obvious? And it's like, yeah, but um, what if you've got three iframes on your page? Should I create the object in that iframe? It's like, no, that would be stupid. <laughs> like, well, but you need to write this down. Yeah. Like, and, and also, if you access the getter twice, does it give you a new object each time? And like, oh, I see. <laughs> right? And so the idea is that that stuff should be spec'd. So someone could follow this spec to the letter and return a different object right. every time that represents the same underlying thing. Yeah, leaving um, a room for interpretation is something that leads to interop issues, which yes. is we, something we've been trying to avoid really, really hard. Exactly. Um, but we're going to just follow what they do. Um, <laughs> the good news is the whole thing around object equivalence, we have covered in the tests. True. So, so even if yeah. there's room for interpretation in the text version of the spec, the tests can remove that ambiguity. Absolutely. So I'm going to. Uh, I, do you know what? See, I, I like me some copy pasting. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to uh, sort of move this down to here. Let's go for this. So, uh, so this is bike shed uh, syntax. It's a definition. Yep. It's an attribute in terms of IDL speed. Yes. Um, it's for IDB cursor. So right. this is saying this this thing that we're defining is a, a, a child of IDB cursor. And that's how bike shed that, knows where to link. Yep. And that's referencing. That, yeah, that. Okay. That there. So uh, the, the getter must return the, uh, and so this is this is IDB. Uh, this is bike shed syntax for creating a reference. Mm -hmm. And you can reference things not just in this spec. You can reference things outside of this spec. Oh, you can like. I mean, yeah, I've seen yep. it in CSS a couple of times where one spec will link to another. Yes. So it, and it, this is because bike shed has this big database of stuff. So. If I, I what I could put here uh, returns the, or uh, I don't know, let's call it a uh, URL. So these double curly braces means I'm referencing a, a an interface. Okay. Um, so if I did that, and we should see uh, this rebuilding. What's it telling us now? Multiple possible URLs. Right. So what I'm going to ask it is I'm going to put a slash there to say I want the top level URL, not the URL that belongs to something else. It might be that that still uh, breaks. No, that seems fine. Uh, we've got multiple attribute definitions because of our copy and pasting. Um, Which is fatal, but it's still compiled. <laughs> still compiled. Do you know what? Bike Shed's great for this sort of thing. It just Very lenient. It just gets the job done. Um, so now we would see um, down here, uh, well, we've got the source appearing again. Must return the URL because I put that in there. And, and it links to the URL spec in the whatwg. And it links to the URL in the whatwg. That's handy. So this Not that we need it right now, but it's good to know. No, I was just, yeah. Because the change we actually need to make is uh, super it's boring. It's very simple, isn't it? Um, so the uh, request attribute getter must return the, let's get rid of that URL, <laughs> um, like the, the source nope. request Requ of this cursor. You want to remove the rest? Whatever. You are going to remove the rest. And now let's see that build. Da, 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 da. We've no got fatal errors. Well done, us. No additional errors from uh, the ones <laughs> we had before. Very important to point uh, out. And so we can see now that our IDB request. It's now a link. It's now a link. And it says the request attribute scatter must return the request of this cursor. Request links up to the thing. That is amazing. That's it. So now we commit these two things, our tests commit and our spec things. changes. So open a PR. Yeah. So that's what I would do. I like um, I would hop well let's let's uh, create a branch, right? Let's uh, call it. I know you oh. have commit rights to master. I don't actually. Oh. Um, not not on index DB. Um, <laughs> oh true, this is index not, not this index DB. So, so let's call it uh, cursor request. Excellent. Uh, now I'm I like my Git GUIs. You, you go I for it. I use my you GitGuis for you. everything. But can I, you zoom in? No, you cannot. Oh, nope. <laughs> Handy. Um, I, I tell you what, I can do this. There we go. 
So, and this is why I like a Git GUI because it just—it's nice and visual, showing me my changes. There's nothing crept in there. It that is a I very didn't small expect. change. It's a very small change, which I, is good. But I like—I like this kind of overview in general when I'm coding because uh, the amount of times that I've caught like console logs, debugger statements, yeah. misspellings. It's my little code review. And I'm like, uh, yes, I'll have that. And yes, I'll have that. Um, I'm not going to commit the HTML. I don't know what the, uh, well, it's telling me it's a new file, which is. That means it's in the git ignore or uh, something. Uh, yeah, or maybe it should be in the git ignore. So I'm going to, I'm going to ignore it. Um, and I'm just going to go add uh, cursor.request. And I will push those changes. Yeah, so that's 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 pushed. Um, but one thing that I realized while actually editing the spec is we've got um, we've got two types of cursor. There's IDB cursor, and da, 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 further down there is IDB cursor with value. Oh, as an extended interface. As an extended interface, because you can get a cursor for uh, just the keys of a mm -hmm. store. Uh, and not including the value as well. OK. Um, and this tends to be what I do when I edit specs. Like I'll, I'll do the tests, I'll do the spec, and then I'll find something that makes me think, hang on, are my tests correct? Yeah. And I'm a bit worried in this case, because uh, when we were doing the tests, uh, we, we are assuming it has a value. Well, no, we're doing object store. And object store is a cursor with value. Uh, that's what I meant. So we are uh, having a cursor with a value. Yes, exactly. And so, but our spec change actually defines it on a cursor with potentially without a value. Which well, yes. So the, the the parent class, and that's where we want it to be. So this is the point where I go. Ah, do you know what? Um, I'm going to put open key cursor, and which that's the one. is the IDB cursor, the yes. one without a value. <laughs> exactly, exactly okay. that. So it's like yeah, just to make sure it's on the parent class rather than on that just that one subclass. Is this something that probably would have? been caught by the code review, because these yeah. reviews will happen in separate repositories, right? Yeah. Yeah, usually when you do spec work like this, you, you make a commit, you do that, and some <laughs> people come back and go, oh, uh, I found this edge case. Do you want to patch that up, make sure that that I can't see. happen? So it's not it like, might happen with this as well. It's not necessarily like a fatal mistake if we would have shipped it without the open key cursor, with the open cursor instead. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So just like trying to figure out because I would personally be very afraid of like oh well, if I don't notice this if am I even good enough for web platform tests right oh, right no I mean pe people will help right yeah. it's, it, you go and have a look at any of my spec PRs uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's like fifty comments of discussion yeah. I don't know if it's going to be for this one because it's like a two line <laughs> change <laughs> I would be impressed uh, but <laughs> hey this is because we're gonna I'm literally writing this now so people could go and have a look at the PR yeah and see if that is what happened so. Um, yeah. Uh, so, like, say or curse or uh, request, um, and uh, yeah. So this is me committing the tests now. Da, 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 with my Git GUI, it's beach balling. It's fine. Um, yeah. Web platform tests is huge. It, it has like a hundred branches because a lot of the browsers default upstream from their own yeah. uh, test stuff into it. So, but I'm looking at that. That's fine. It's yes, got in the this right case, stuff we in. do want a new file because we created it. Yep. So, cursor.request. I'm happy with that. Uh, and push that up to, to GitHub. We're done. And we are done. So now we will open PRs so and we'll, we'll wait PRs. for the feedback from the other browser vendors, vendors on it. Exactly. Probably. And so, hopefully, by the time this episode goes out, People are just going to have said, it's totally fine. There's no <laughs> mistakes. You haven't done anything wrong. Um, and this feature can just be shipped very easily in browsers. Amazing. Thank you. Right, let's, uh, oh, look at that. Look at that resizing being totally unhelpful. Let's uh, tell you what, I'm not going to do that. Tab. I'm going to create another window or create, yeah, create another tab. Is that going to resize badly as well? Yeah, it is. Of course yeah. it is. Why not? All right, let's. Uh, Let's go like that. So something for the edit. Something for the <laughs> <laughs>